All right. Well, good morning to all of you who are listening in. Uh, this is Professor Love again, providing a solution uh, to a problem on the homework. This problem comes from section 6.6, .6, and it is problem number nine. Um, the question asks, solve triangle ABC. I've drawn that in here. Uh, and we're told that the side length B is 125, the side length C is 164, A is unknown. We're told that angle B is 40 degrees, but both other angles are unknown. Um, to give you a, just a, a tip on this one, this comes from the section on the law of cosines. Uh, but this problem is a little bit harder in that it does not immediately use the law of cosines. You have to go back to the previous section to use the law of sines. If you remember that law of sines, it tells you that the ratio of sine of an angle over its side length is equal to every other corresponding angle over side length pair. So this angle B, if you take the sine of this and you divide it by this side length B, that's equal to the sine of whatever C is divided by this side length. And that's equal to the sine of whatever this angle is, sorry, A, divided by either of these side lengths, A1, A2. And so that's where we're gonna begin. So we know sine of 40 degrees, we can figure that out. We can't figure out any of the other signs because we don't know those angles, uh, but we're gonna use this ratio. Sine of 40 over 125 is equal to the sine of C over 164. This tells us very, very quickly that the angle C, when you take its sine, is equal to this. Okay, now there's a nice little evaluation of that, 0.84334. And we're gonna try and use the sine inverse of this value, 0.84334, to determine what C is. And that'll help us complete the angles. And then we'll be able to use the law of cosines. Um, but uh, this one's a little bit tricky because 0.84334, as you can see, is right here on the on the y-axis. So I drew this vertical or this horizontal line at that height. You can see that there are two angles in the first 180 degrees of the circle uh, that give us that, and those are the two angles uh, that could be allowed for this triangle. Um, so we, you can see here with B being 40 degrees, uh, being acute we can have both of these possibilities. If B were too big, if it was too large, then we wouldn't be able to have both of these angles perhaps. Um, so from here, we know that we're gonna get uh, two angles. Uh, your calculator will tell you one of these if you just plug in the sine inverse of, um, uh, if you just plug in the sine inverse of 0.84334. Um, and I believe it'll give you 57.5 degrees. But we also know that this other angle exists and to find that one, it's, it's kind of easy. Uh, we know that it has the same reference angle as 57.5 degrees uh, because it has the same sign. It's a positive sign value. So it, it's up here in the first and second quadrant. Has, it has the same reference angle as 57 and a half. So we just take 180 minus 57.5 to give us 122.5. So there's two options here. There's two options for the angle C. Um, and we can list both of them over here. Um, 57.5 or 122.5. And that also gives us two options then for a, right? Um, we know that the sum of all three angles must be 180 degrees. So we can just take 180 minus 57.5, which we know is 122.5. And then we just take 40 from that. And that gives us one of the options for angle A. A could equal 82.5. That's 122 minus 40. Okay, uh, the other option is 180 minus, or minus 122.5, which we know is 57.5 minus 40, and that gives us 17.5. So there's our two possibilities for A. Um, 
2.5, 17.5. So from there, it's rather quick to find the two possible side values for A. This is just gonna come straight out of the law of cosines. Um, let's go with A1. A1 squared is equal to 164 squared plus 125 squared minus two times 125 times 164 times the cosine of pick an angle 82 and a half or 17 and a half either one okay so there's one option the next option is to do the exact same thing but instead replace this 82.5 with 17.5 and when you evaluate all these out and then take the square root, you'll get the two possible side values for A. You'll get both A1 and A2, depending on which angle you've chosen here. And that's it. It's a rather quick solution. You just have to remember to use the law of sines prior to using the law of cosines. Okay, so I hope that helps. And uh, let me know if you have any other questions.